Hi, hello. <laughs> Welcome to 333 uh, Ascended Masters Teaching. Yes. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> so, a little while back, I had ordered this ebook of uh, Ascended Masters, uh, Ancient Wisdom of the Ascended Masters. And uh, so, we decided we would start sharing that with you um, for free. <laughs> so, today we're on number three, which is awesome because a lot of threes go on out today. A lot of uh, feelings of fruition and coming to completion. And a lot of feelings of understanding. Mm -hmm. I feel like us as a couple have come to some really good understandings lately. I feel like. Back in the day, you used to have to climb up to the top of a mountain to get this kind of information from somebody. Mm -hmm. you know? Or then after a while, you had to go to a library. And you had to go into the library and you had to search through the books. And then you had to find the book. And then you had to search through that part of the book to figure out where that ascended master was. And spend all this time and all this dust and all this. Nice <laughs> stuff, right? I've been there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, just kind I love the library back in the 90s. And be grateful. <laughs> For what we have and the access we have nowadays, and uh, use it to the best of your ability. Yes. So today <clears throat> is. Yes, Hazrat Babahan. Yeah. Yes. Who is actually a woman? I'll show you the picture if we can get it to you real quick. Beautiful elderly lady. Babahan was a Sufi mystic who was born in Afghanistan, the daughter of a Zoroastrian fa family of noble blood. Her maiden name was Gulrok, and her, from an early age she was groomed as any other Afghan aristocrat, learning the Quran by heart and becoming conversational in many languages, including Arabic, Persian, Urdi, Urdu, and Pushtu. <clears throat> From her early life, however, she held mystical interests, and unlike other girls at her age, she preferred to spend much of her time in solitude, in prayer, and meditation. All right, and on her 18th birthday, she was born... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <On her> eight, <laughs> she was born on her 18th birthday. No, on her 18th birthday, she was to be married to a groom who had been chosen for her. But she fled the marriage and escaped to a new life. To those who knew her, the escape must have not been a surprise. She had always been far more interested in introspection and spirituality than in love, marriage, and family, and showed little interest in the noble traditions of her family line. Eventually, she came to a city called Peshawar and studied under a Hindu guru. On his advice, she went to the mountains, secluded herself there, and underwent a severe spiritual training and practiced near complete austerity. She lived there for 17 months. When she returned, she dedicated her life to being a sadhvi, or holy person. At the age of 37, she met a Muslim saint, Muslim saint who was said to have ended her long spiritual struggle by giving her God consciousness. After returning her to him, or excuse me, after returning to her Hindu guru and traveling far and wide, Babahan came to settle in the city of Pune in India. There she slept outdoors and lived as a silent mystic. Mm. Hazrat Babahan would sit silently under a tree for days on end in a quiet contemplation of her spirit, and for her, that quiet contemplation were the only religious teachings that she needed. Soon crowds gathered, and pilgrims would come to simply sit with her in silence. While some came, while some called her a Muslim mystic, 
Others regarded her as a witch or charlatan. Children would cast stones at her, but she refused to move. Begrudgingly, she ultimately allowed her followers to construct a makeshift shelter over her to afford her some shelter from the elements and passersby. However, though some called her a blasphemer or a fraud, what was once a miserable village teeming with poverty slowly began to grow and attain prosperity. People are attracted to spirits. Babahan is perhaps best remembered for one of her pupils, Mihir Baba. From her spot at Babahan's feet, Babahan would watch Mihir Baba walk past her day after day, just a boy walking to school. Before long, Mihir Baba began to spend time with the guru, who, of course, said nothing. They would sit beside one another in silence day after day. Finally, on an otherwise unremarkable day in May 1913, Baba Han kissed Meher Baba on the forehead. No ordinary kiss. Her kiss was so powerful that it knocked the boy out. He was essentially comatose for nine months. She had passed along what had been given to her, the God consciousness. She died in... September of 1931, after a surgery on one of her fingers. Before she died, she is said to have uttered, the work is over, I must close the shop. Oh. Oh, did me too. Did, did me too. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, teachings. As an often silent mystic, Hazrat Babahan, doesn't have many teachings per se, but she was a living embodiment of the divine transmission of knowledge. Perhaps her greatest teaching was that like her and like Meher Baba, uh, any of us can become vessels for the divine. And we can all gain nourishment from the realm of spirit and light. Yes. So the greatest lessons the divine can teach any of us if only we are open to the experience. Oh, that's, it actually says touch any of us. Oh. The divine can touch any of us. What did I say? Teach. Teach. Oh, okay. You can yeah, touch yeah. any of us. It's the same, right? Yes. When you're touched <laughs> by the spirit, it's, you're willing to listen. Right. You will, you will learn. You, you will be taught. That. <laughs> <laughs> the nourishment of spirit. <clears throat> excuse me. The nourishment of spirit is as vital and as valuable as the nourishment of rich food and drink. Mm -hmm. Great, greatest quotes. So she did say some things from time to time. Oh, <laughs> Despite millions of learned pundits and thousands of wise men, only God understands his own way of working. Very, very complex. Wonderful is your creation, O oh God. Wonderful is your game. You poured jasmine oil on the head of a shrew. Mm. <laughs> okay. Oh, we heard a little bit about this one. It is time. Time for me to leave now. The work is over. I must close the shop. Uh, nobody, nobody wants my wares. Nobody can afford the price. I have turned my goods over to the proprietor.